Haleluya. Ready to meet more of our friends, more of the kingdom. Amen. Anybody's ready to meet more of the kingdom? Haleluya. Yes. Um, you know, um, I, I had different type of managers as I worked for Nike. And uh, the managers that came from the engineering side, they knew, they call it nuts and bolts, you know, they knew how to put things together. And they were managing in a different way. So for example, if they would give you something to do, they knew how long it takes to code that, to change that. The managers that came from top down, you know, kind of a business, they work for performance. I don't care how long it takes you, I want that. Because the boss wants that, you know? So I'm thinking, what kind of managers are we in the kingdom of God? See, the, the reason we have to know the nuts and bolts is that we are managers that understand what knowledge, what wisdom, what might do. You know, you, you cannot give them work to do unless you understand what they do and how they do it. See, you are sons. And that verse came to me in uh, Galatians 4, that until the son is of age, is under tutors and trainers. In the kingdom, the seven spheres are some of the tutors. Now, if you have servants in the house and you're a kid, you don't know. You just know that you're hungry. <laughs> so you look for your tea. <laughs> you look for your food. That's all. You don't understand that knowledge brings that and my does that, you know. You just know that you, you are hungry um, and they take care of you. And then you go to the class, you know. So it's a class of understanding. And he takes you deep in some verses and stuff. It's like, wow, I never saw this before. So that was, that was a class of the tutor. It was a class on understanding. So it teaches you, it helps you grow. But you don't quite know the difference, right? For you, it's to grow. But as you grow, your father comes you know, and the Holy Spirit actually comes and starts showing you what everything does. Because then you are the master of the house. And you need to know what they do and how they do it. So if you see a son in training, you discern, hey, you need some time with understanding. You know, here's a couple of books. And just ask knowledge from the Lord. You need some time with this tutor. Do you see how, how it works? When you are not of age, it doesn't really matter. It's the Lord taking care of you, right? Because the mother and the father pay for the servants to come and clean your house. You know, so that's it. You know, you just have a house clean. That's it. You don't get to know them necessarily. But as you grow... You know that in your father's house, there are all kind of servants, and they work with a purpose. They were created with a purpose. They do specific tasks. And you get to know that. So when you come to be of age, when you come to maturity, you start distributing and using this and working diligently with the kingdom for what needs are there, okay? There is a difference when you stand in faith and there is another difference when you work with faith, okay? Again, need faith, you know, stand on the word. You don't need to know it's a spirit of faith. It's just this is my standing, right? But there are times when you send that. Hey, just say a word, Jesus. And my servant will be healed. He sent faith with the word. He sent faith with the word. Right? And got healed. Right? So he knew because that was the servant right there at his disposal. So he sent that. He saw that faith of that centurion. 
and he sent faith to heal. Amen? Good. So it comes a little bit more clear. Go through Galatians 4 and start understanding what does it mean that I, you know, all these servants are looking. And yes, these servants work as you get plugged into a, a, a living body of Christ, a living church, a living fellowship. Um, they work through the leaders. Okay, one of the translations in Greek of the word tutors is epitropos. So that's what, you know, the same word that when Paul sends Timothy or Titus, I send you to put this epitropos in different places. So they come through the leaders. They can work to the leaders. Okay, and they are there to oversight your growth. Okay, amen? Good. So, uh, today we have a couple of more that we are going to meet. Um, we are going to talk about counsel. So, when, uh, when Michael did the school of ministry, I would say 90% of what he was talking about was about wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Because they were the most useful for that season. So the Lord said, hey, why don't you, why don't you go and learn about the others, <laughs> the other four? So that's why we talked about the might and fear of the Lord, because there are things that um, they are barely released into the body of Christ. So what you heard yesterday, it's fairly new. Okay, don't, don't look on the internet. Actually, I did. I was curious one time and said, hey, anybody understands the seven spirits or is anything on the internet about the fear of the Lord? And I found very, very little, nothing like what you heard yesterday. Okay? So take it, keep listening, and release it in the body of Christ because the sons are growing, are maturing. Okay? Sonship is maturing uh, around the world. Amen? Good. So, counsel. It's a difference between wisdom, understanding, and counsel. Counsel is one of, I would say, my, one of my best friends because it's one of the deepest knowing of the treasures and of the heart of God and I'll, I'll go with you to understand that and hopefully you'll love counsel so let's start to set up um, Proverbs 16 9 a man's heart plans his way but the Lord directs his steps Proverbs 19 21 there are many plans in man's heart nevertheless the Lord's counsel that will stand so the way the way he started to introduce himself to me was with questions and one of the, some of the questions probably you asked yourself it's like does god make sense always good question val so that's, that's what he led me to the depth of counsel, right? Does God answer all your prayers on time? <laughs> well, his time. Is God sometimes quiet? Especially when you would like him to talk more. So I would hear these questions and I know someone wants to, to be known. <laughs> See, the Lord never asks you questions to confuse you, but to reveal to you. He's not the author of confusion. Yeah. The world is, <laughs> the religion is. <laughs> the Lord always wants you to come deeper and know Him. Okay? <clears throat> and then um, He said, God does not want to meet your needs. 
He always wants to exceed them. So it's like, wow. So I'm asking for that because I want my healing. I want this problem solved. And he doesn't answer that. Because there is something deeper than that. It's something more than that. Ready to dig in? Okay, okay. I think I, I stirred up a little bit. Um, the seeking, okay? So what is God's counsel that will stand? We read in Proverbs. Uh, in Jeremiah 23, 18, <laughs> This, this is one of those uh, places in the scripture that uh, intrigued me because it says, who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? Who has perceived and heard his word, the counsel word? Who has marked his word and heard it? Just, just imagine, there is, there is a a round table. <laughs> Here's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, after the directions of the Father. And Holy Spirit is the head of the table, right? So they are, you know, the chief, the chief angels that have to do things. And here's the counsel, the spirit of counsel right there, because he sees and understands beyond anything that all the others can do, can read the map. <laughs> and there is a council. That's the table. There were things are discussed. Who stood at the council of the Lord? Okay, so this is this is some place that sons can get to. If we even know about or want that okay so I know this is gonna stir some deeper seeking and desire more than what you think you know okay because what you think you know it's the yesterdays now everything is new amen, amen. everything it's new <laughs> so there is, a, there is a problem when there is no counsel or the wrong counsel. So Deuteronomy 32.28 says they are a nation void of counsel, nor is there any understanding in them. Okay? This is, this is a, a pretty big disaster. <laughs> okay. Because people keep going according to the trends, okay? And lots of you know, ministries go according to what's out there. But there is no counsel. And there is no deep understanding. Why do we do this? Well, to get people in. It's like, is this the counsel of the Lord? Um, the Joshua 9.14 um, it, it talks about um, uh, the Gibeonites. You know, there were some people that lived there and they tricked Joshua. You know, people that come and they present themselves in a way that they are not. Okay? And yes, fear of the Lord will help you not to look at the outside. But lots of times you need to understand what's going on. Why are they like that? And Joshua 9.14 says, The men of Israel took some of their provision, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. So the reason you take whatever people sell to you is that there is no counsel time. Okay, so that's, um, that's the danger. I love in Job 15, 8, it says, Have you heard the counsel of God? Or do you limit wisdom to yourself? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's time to go deeper. Amen? It's time to go deeper. 
Job 38, 2, <laughs> God comes and uh, actually he's, uh, he, he loves what Job said compared to his friends, but not compared with his righteous, righteousness, right? So he says, who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Everything is alive. <laughs> Not having the knowledge what happened behind it, Job was speaking. He didn't know what's behind, so no knowledge. So that darkens the counsel. Yeah. So you sons, you'll get much more sensitive when you talk to someone when you have to make a decision because you will wait for the counsel. Okay? So let's, let's, let's talk about um, this uh, counsel. So uh, Psalm 16, 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I thought night seasons are hard. Mm -mm. Night seasons are times when counsel can speak. Remember how it says in Isaiah, I'll give you the treasures of darkness? Those are treasures hard to find. Super hard to find. Everybody finds the superficial ones. I find this, I find this, I got this, you know. But the treasures of darkness are hard to find. Those are the nights where counsel speaks to you, deeply speaks to you. We're going deep. <laughs> Psalm 73, uh, 24. And you, you can find your own verses and do this and expand on this, okay? This is the seed. Okay, coming into your sons. You will guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you receive me into glory. So, uh, just kind of uh, explaining a little bit. So, wisdom shows you what to do. Knowledge and understanding shows you the reason to do. Knowledge shows you how to do, but counsel shows you where you're going, the purpose that you want to do. Okay? So each of them, um, counsel is directional, but doesn't point you to the steps, the plans. You know, left, right. That's lots of knowledge and wisdom. But counsel says that's what you're going to get. All of this, I know it doesn't make sense now, but that's what I want to take you. That's counsel. Okay? We usually hear directions and steps, but do not seek the purpose. And that's because we don't know that we can reach to counsel. Okay? So, uh, the purpose is established through counsel. So there are several verses, uh, Proverbs 15, 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. You, you don't get there. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Okay. Proverbs 19, 21. There are many plans, purposes, in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. So counsel is not dealing with the step-by-step -step planning as much as wisdom. Rather, counsel is establishing purposes. So an example of how counsel was working with our Lord Jesus when he was here. So the disciples, that's John 9, Ask him, so this, this is a blind person, born blind, right? And he's asking them, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, 
this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but the, that, that the works of God should be revealed in him. So in the Hebrew language, there are two type of why question. Okay? There is a why that shows why this, you know, did I do something wrong? Why is this happening to me? And there is another why that shows to what purpose? Why is this happening? To what purpose? Okay. The council answers the second why. So if you keep trying to dig in and say, what did I miss? What, you know, that, that's not counsel. It's not going to answer that. So what did Jesus do with counsel? They ask the reason. <laughs> and he answers the purpose. Do you see that? Why is this guy born like this? Who sinned? And he says, I, I don't care. That's not what I'm answering. I'm answering the why, the purpose. So counsel sets you on the path of understanding where you are going instead of digging in and fixing the old problems. Okay? So if the Lord comes and says, yes, I want to give you this and I want to do that, says, well, it doesn't make sense because I got this, I got that, and nothing looks like it because you are still answering the why, the wrong why. <laughs> so you have to hear the counsel. <laughs> Amen? Good, good. So it's very important to see how counsel worked with our Lord Jesus. Okay? Purpose. Okay? Proverbs 25, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Hmm. So deep, deep inside you, you know the purpose. Deep inside you, you do know the purpose. But it's such a deep water that you don't have the bucket to pull it out, to draw it out. So somebody, somebody that is friends with counsel talks to you or prays for you or speaks to you and suddenly that water comes up and says, oh man, this makes sense. It's like rearranges your life. You, you find purpose. You know, oh wow, all of that. It's for this. Right? So the, the drawing comes through understanding. That's the name of the bucket that draws the water from the well. Okay? But the water is there. Deep water. Lots of times we tell people, go and take some, take some time, just fast, just pray in tongues. Just take a couple of days off. Or half of day. You know, don't 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 try to fish in the in, in the in the river. Try to go for the deep well. So the prayer in tongues kind of clears all those past why questions. And it brings that understanding to draw from the well. So this is this is why. Those days, those times are important because that water is deep in there. The purpose of God is deep inside you. Okay? Isaiah 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I think we will avoid lots of wilderness time if we hear counsel. We will avoid it. Because wilderness is a bunch of why this and why that. 
you know the meaning of the word manna, right? When I said manna, it's like, what is this? <laughs> Every day they would ask, what is this? What is this? That's wilderness question. What is this? Why is this? Why has this happened to me? Why is it? You know, that's wilderness question. <laughs> that's a manna. <laughs> I can tell that you are on manna <laughs> and not on keen and food. <laughs> And this, and this, and this, and that. You know, that's what is this? It's a manna question. Okay? Good. I mean, good. We don't talk good and bad. <laughs> it's the right thing to understand. So, um, um, Romans 8, 28, uh, one of the verses that we absolutely memorize and we know, it says, we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. So why is this like this? And why is this not like that? You know, you, you are asking the why, wrong why question. Because he says you are called to the purpose. Why don't you take some time and talk to counsel? Sons, we, all of them are around us. <laughs> there is no excuse. Oh, there is excuse for those in religion that, you know, they have to go to the prophet. They have to go to the vessel. They have to go to the pastor, right, to get some counsel. But you have the counsel with you all the time. All the time. This is for us. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So counsel is always pointing to your destiny. The answers from God are sometimes into seeing the big picture. Therefore, you cannot hear them if you are not ready for that. Because you are maybe still lost in the details and there is lots of wisdom and understanding for the details. I mean, that's, God didn't just drop us, you know, in the middle of nowhere. No, it is lots of help the day by day, right? But this is, when, when you really look for counsel, expect the big picture. Purpose. Destiny. That's where you're going. I did have lots of talk with counsel lately. So he showed me those maps of where the suns pop up. Purpose. So that's, that map is always, always in my eyes, in my inner eyes, and I see it. And um, By the way, uh, tomorrow morning at the service, I would like, um, I haven't checked with you, but I think it's okay to have um, leaders from SLS and you know, pastors from different places. We talk to Daniel and Joy to have like a five minute um, praise report or testimony about you know, who you are so everybody online can know you because this is a huge increase. So if you are more like from Bangalore, just delegate one of the persons that will, will speak. You know, I'm looking at Raphael. <laughs> but you, you know who, who can speak, it's, it's okay. So, you know, Dubai, Bangalore, Chennai, I mean, every, every single one and, and that, okay? So, that's going to be tomorrow. I'm, I'm so excited. So, counsel. Acts twenty twenty seven. For I have not shunned to declare to you, says the Apostle Paul to Ephesians, to the Ephesians people, the whole counsel of God. I mean, this is, this is interesting. That apostle really understood the counsel, the purpose, where you are going. Ephesians 1.11, I love this. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So you go deep, you talk to counsel, you get to the will of God. It's like, wow. (laughs) 
And yes, generally we know, you know, his will, he's a good father, we know that, but there are deeper manifestations of his will that he reveals to us for our lives through the council. He does everything according to the counsel of his will. <laughs> Hebrews 6.17, thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, that's us, the immutability, wow, what a word, of his counsel. <laughs> Confirmed it by an oath. Okay, so uh, there is a deep counsel. So get this, because I know you know how to work with the promises, but the Lord is opening another layer there. Okay, there is a deep counsel in every promise of God. More than a solution to your problem. but a way to see them so you can overcome them. The reason the problem keep coming and keep repeating is that you ne never went deep into the council to come in a place to see purpose because that gives you a position of authority over the problem. So you don't need it fixed all the time but you see it and overcome it, and it's done. Okay, that's the counsel. The delay in receiving the answer is not in time, but in hearing and perceiving the counsel. Because he wants you to become immutable, like the counsel is. So every single one of these servants, they, it's a relationship, right? So they impart to you the essence of their, how they were created. It's a life transfer. It's not a, just a message. It's not just a, let's, let's chat. It's not WhatsApp, okay? It's like in heaven, it's a life transfer, life transfer. So they bring that immutability, that steadiness, that establishing. So I know you talk to counsel because you got that. Hey, it's done. I know it. I'm good. You know, I don't have to keep dealing with that all the time. I'm established. Okay? That's the impartation of counsel. So, um, everyone um, says with me, um, Father, I see the whole kingdom. Spirit of counsel, I love you. I want you to work in my soul. And I want to know you. I want you to impart in me your unchanging nature. And right now I give you place in my soul to bring the deep purposes of my Father. Amen. Amen. Good. So uh, this is the first one. We can take five minutes, okay? Um, next is gonna be the spirit of rest, okay? Um, again, you never heard it before. It's new, amen? So it's not anything that was there. So it's new, okay? Amen? Okay, good. What, what you sow is what you reap. So, uh, um, it very, so again, for the other ones, so you learn to manage time or otherwise the time is going to manage you.
okay, what you sow is what you reap. So it's important. How is that? How do you manage it by being consistent to what you say? If you are not sure you can be somewhere in five minutes, do not say the word. Because that's, that's where the son knows how to rule his soul. Okay? You sow those seeds. Hey, I'll see you in five minutes and show up in half an hour. That seed is like you don't even trust your words. Why would the sickness trust your word? If you don't trust your, if you don't believe your own words, well, I'm saying something, it's okay, they, they'll get whatever. Well, so to me, if you are thinking about growing in manifested power, and that's where I got some people, some sons there in Portland, you know, if you don't know how to manage time and how to manage your words, don't tell me about authority. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not, you don't believe your words. You, you just trespassed your words five times today. I mean, it's like, you know, don't say to someone, it's so good to see you if it's not good to see them. Why would you say that? <laughs> see, you sow this deceit in your soul. And then when you tell the father, it's so good to see you, you don't believe it. It's the same words. What are you doing? I mean, are you a son only in church? Or only when you listen to beloved? That's when you're a son? Or you're a son 24 hours? Because the, the authority and things that you have to do, they are not necessarily when you are in church. words managing time so this this is a little bit more mature sonship okay but i just wanted to give you a little bit of that you know so if you were in michael's training <laughs> that's why it's so military so so strict okay um because i mean you can say hey i i i, I have to come in i need half an hour okay Nobody made you say five minutes, okay? But you bind yourself with those words, and then you sow that mistrust in your own soul. You know, the problem of lying is, yeah, it's against the law, but that's not, we are not under the law. The problem of lying is, again, sowing and reaping. As you lie or say half-truth, What's sowing in, and what's reaping in your own soul, you're going to stop discerning when somebody else is lying to you. So you'll be very easily deceived. Very easily deceived. Sounds, we, I mean, this is not law. I mean, you know, do not lie. <laughs> you are free, but is this what you want to reap? <laughs> See, sons think completely different. You know, take, take all the Ten Commandments and take them in sonship and see. You know, do not commit adultery. It's like, why? You know, I'm free. Yes, but you want to sow this in your family? <laughs> you know, I, I, I tell the young, young guys, you know, uh, about fornication. It's like, well, it's, uh, you know, the Lord forgives me and this is happening and... Yeah, you know, I love that girl, and we will be married, you know. And I say, okay, think about this. The, the word says that you are one flesh with the one that you sleep with. So the girl sleeps with future husbands, three or four, every time she's one flesh, one body with each of them. So how much is left for the husband that she'll have? A little bit. So then you enter a marriage completely fragmented, broken, with nothing to give to the husband. Nothing. It's like, man, I don't feel like loving you. Why? Because all those pieces were with the other man in the flesh. Yeah. What you sow. <laughs> what you sow. 
You know, you, you sow adultery, then what you read back, you'll never trust your partner. You'll always think that he cheats on you. She's cheating on you. Always will think that because you are not faithful. Sowing and reaping. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the families where there is an adultery from the man or the wife, man, this is so much to, to recover because they don't trust each other. I mean, he might become a son so pure, so clear, it's all disowned, so the spouse never trusts him or her. Sowing and reaping. Man, we got into the law now. <laughs> This is free. This is bonus, okay? It's not <laughs> just because you guys are here, you sowed this time. Okay, I want you to understand this. You know, some of you traveled long distances. You took time off. Uh, you closed businesses or you're not available. You know, you close your phones. Hallelujah. I didn't hear one today, so that's good. But this is a sowing because you are going to reap amazing, amazing. I mean, all this relationship with the kingdom of God, that's, that's something that's going to bring a growth inside you that you never had before. But it comes because you sow this. You, you came, you gave your time. So sowing and reaping, you know, the, the money thing, I mean, it's like, you don't want to get give that's okay keep it all it's not a begging for money well you have to do this you have no you know sons don't believe in that have to you know if you have to then you don't have to you know you have to understand what is happening here because you live in a different realm, a realm where sowing and reaping is real. You don't sow in a church, you sow in the kingdom. You have a covenant with the Father. Otherwise, Babylon is going to get all of it. It's going to rip you off. Because that's all he knows to do. <laughs> And so so you, you have a covenant to the Lord. That means you are not in Babylon. Your money is sanctified. You sow and reap from him. In the way he does. He makes the business to prosper. People to give to you and all this stuff. Now, if you don't understand that, it's like, no. You think God needs your money? You think he has gold in heaven? No, nah, not this gold. He counts rupees, dollars, God? No, <laughs> no, it has no use and neither do you. <laughs> you have everything that you need, everything that you need. You are so blessed, you know, but you are in a covenant to get things going. Because he satisfies your needs and then abundance, prosperity, means that he gives you above and beyond so he can sow more. The sons are the ones that give the most. You know? And it's not because they have to. You know? No. Because they, they understand the kingdom principle. Amen? Good. Okay. Try to finish in time. He's watching me. <laughs> um, so we're going to start talking about the spirit of rest, and I'm going to I'm going to set some uh, foundational things. Most of them are already inside you because they've been settled for years now. But maybe you'll hear them in a different way. Okay, so. Uh, Isaiah 11:2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest. So this is everything that happens to the father is alive. He doesn't just take rest to sit on a chair, okay? Because everything in heaven is a spiritual being. It's alive to him. 
You cannot exist around him unless you are absolutely alive. That means he has a relationship. That means rest talks to him. <laughs> it has to be a relationship. Otherwise, it cannot exist around him. Okay? So no, he didn't, didn't take vacation. Okay? <laughs> he created this habitation called rest. Okay? So the spirit of all the Lord shall rest upon him. So rest comes, then wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. Okay? We're talking with Priya about the menorah, you know, that they are the twos, you know, the three branches kind of which are the pairs, and the top one is the spirit of rest. Okay? Because he brings this habitation, this realm. The relationship with understanding, with might, everything happens in rest. Because our father entered rest, and it doesn't say that he came out. The A day, it's coming when the new earth and the new starts, the new creation, but he's still in the seventh. He's still in rest. <laughs> so then everything in relationship for us happens in the realm of rest. Okay? Very important to get this. Hebrews 4.9 Then remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So we enter his rest. So the relationship he has with rest, we have with rest. Because we enter the same habitation of rest. Okay? Good. So, um, the rest means, um, you know, one of the words in Hebrew is Sabbath. So, you hear about the seventh day and the Sabbath and the people who believe in that. And uh, that's a shadow. You know, love the seventh day Adventists. That's okay. That's, you know, they're your brothers and sisters if they believe in Jesus. But they still live in a shadow because uh, I remember when I talked to them and I had this revelation, they asked me, do you keep the Sabbath? I said, absolutely. I made friends with some, you know, because they expect the, the Sunday goers to kind of kick them out. And, oh, you do? Okay, so you are one of us? I'm not sure if I'm one of you, but I do believe, yes, Absolutely. Because the difference is for me, Sabbath is seven days a week. <laughs> if you are asking in your terms, for me, I'm always in Sabbath. Okay, so, so we have a little difference, you know. So and the apostle says, for one, one day is different than others. For all, all days are the same. That's for us. All days are the same. They're all Sabbath. Amen? Good. So now... <sighs> By the seventh day, in Genesis 2.2, 2, by the seventh day, God completed his work, which he has done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he has done. So rest is a place of completion and oneness between the work and the worker. I'm going to say it again. It's a place of completion and oneness between the work and the worker. And the eighth day always starts from rest. Every new beginning starts after the seventh day. Always starts from rest. So if, if you haven't got this, then new creation probably doesn't make too much sense. Okay. By the way, we're talking about uh, the gifts of the Spirit, you know, the, the words of knowledge, and I kind of map them for you, like might with the gifts of healing, fear of the Lord, the miracles, counsel with prophet, the new prophets, okay, not the old style prophets. Rest maps with faith, simple, gift of faith. Okay. Good. Back to back to rest. And um, the the word means to cease. 
you know, to desist, to, to, to kind of uh, cease. It's almost like you finish an existence, you enter another existence. That's an existence in rest. So the primary idea is that a sitting down or sitting still. Okay? Rest is the place where the doing and the being become one. The doing and the being become one. That's in rest. It's the place where all the doing gets converted into being, thus getting eternal existence. You know, your doing doesn't have eternal existence unless it comes in rest. That's the place where it becomes being. Now, you, you are so blessed here because you hear so much, I rested, just rest. Because it creates this place where all your believing for healing, for changes, for things, actually they become being. You become healed. You become, you are healed. So that's, it's such a blessing that you, understand, you, you are into this and I, I hear lots of testimonies from lots of you because that's where you are taking into. Okay? Jesus overcoming experience was, was brought to sitting down at the right hand of majesty. Guess what? Jesus entered rest too. I mean, don't believe that he was tired. He exercised too much going through heaven. <laughs> and he needs to sit down. Uh, I mean, we have to get rid of that type of, I mean, it's, it's okay if you really sit, see him kind of, you know. Um, but no, that's, that's actually an expression to show that he rested. I... I do have an issue because I understand that somehow and not believing people that see Jesus doing lots of stuff, you know. But since they don't understand living kingdom, that he's absolutely the boss of all, he's the Lord of Lords and he's just directing, he's still in rest. You know, they see Jesus doing, Jesus come, Jesus say, Jesus, you know. So it's like, he's not going to move out. <laughs> he's still sitting. Last time I checked, he was still sitting. Okay, so, but it's, it's fine. That's the limited understanding. You know, Jesus comes, I see Jesus, he comes, he walks, he does, he, you know, hallelujah, that's okay. You know, but it's, uh, you know, he has a living kingdom that he can come to you through Amazing spiritual power, spiritual angels, amazing. And they look so glorious and so alive, and actually they feel honored if you call them Jesus. You know, I'm not talking the false ones, okay? I'm talking the right ones. They feel honored because they know they are Jesus. They are Jesus' send messengers to you. Okay? So. Um, we are overcoming in our souls and becoming who we have already been. So this is a big thing because you were already in him and in the beyond time existence, you are already a son but you cannot come into the doing and the being unless you understand rest. So it's a big thing. Because right. that's when you understand your spiritual existence as a son. You're always a son. Okay. Yes, you receive this. Yes, you do this. Yes, then you know you're a son. But when you understand actually the realm of rest, you know that you're always a son. That's the doing and the being become one and rest. It's an amazing creation of the Father. I mean, what did you expect less? <laughs> you expect it's just kind of a sauna where you go and just hang out and kind of refresh a little bit. Maybe it is for some. 
<laughs> we need it sometimes. But um, no, no, this is a spiritual creation with so much meaning. Amen? And one of the purpose you hear this is to kind of shake a little bit uh, the ceiling that you got stuck at, you know? And it says, oh my gosh, this is so much more. It's like, wow, I want to know my father's kingdom. Okay, so if you leave with that, it's very good. So um, um, Michael was using this and in his training, uh, the example of riding a bicycle, you are doing until you become one with the riding. Okay, at that time you rest. That means you're not thinking about how to ride the bike. You know, for us, for some of us, it's driving also. You know, you do that, you listen to music, you talk on the phone or something. It's like, oh my gosh, what did they do the last 20 minutes? How did they go through all this crazy traffic? <laughs> you know, it, it, you don't realize what's happening. You know, the wheel and the left hand and the wheel, you know, it moves and you become one with the riding. You know? So that's that's kind of a an outside example of doing and being, right? As you do, you enter rest. That's when you rest, when you are one with the riding, okay? And I have a comment here that to not try to get on a bike is not rest, okay? That's laziness. All right, that's a comment. Good, so the soul of sons, what, what's happening when you rest? Why you don't have to do this, do this, say this, uh, pray this, and why, why is that? Because uh, the purpose of the soul life, so our souls got disconnected from our Father. And when we get born again, we get reconnect, reconnected. Okay, so become spirit, soul, and body. But the soul doesn't understand eternal life. Not yet. Okay, still understands the world atmosphere, the world things, the tree of knowledge. It's taught by the tree of knowledge. You know, the mind is still debating stuff. You now, how many of you debated sonship? You know? <laughs> Very few just took it, this is it. You know, it's kind of, uh, no, no, because the soul is taught debating. Emotional roller coaster. So, so the soul life, it's coming into understanding the spirit life. Right? So in Greek, there are different words. You probably know the soul life is called psyche. And the spirit life is called zoe. It's a different type of things. So when Jesus says to the disciples, unless you lose your life, he talks about psyche. You have to lose your soul life. Why? To get a better one. <laughs> so the purpose of the soul life is oneness back with the spirit. Because it's been separated. Okay. So the existence of the soul, the place of creation and change is always coming to an end to cease by rest where every work is converted into spiritual existence. So you have to learn this, especially coming from religion, you know, to not do. Because otherwise, you cannot move forward. You know, you will go back into doing things to be. Doing things to get somewhere. Doing things to arrive somewhere. And you never arrive. You keep doing. Maybe one day, brother, in heaven. <laughs> you know. But when you learn this, to cease, to stop doing... Okay, you find rest. You enter rest. And this is the place where the soul gets changed into, okay, no more C word, but use a different C word. It's changed into spiritual existence. 
Okay? So the salvation of our souls is entering back in this possession of God by bringing every work into eternal existence of the Spirit. You don't have to memorize this. Maybe not to understand either. Just know that you are on a journey okay, to change, to come into this eternal salvation where spirit and soul become one. They have one existence, oneness. Oneness with him. That's why I want to say we are one. We are one with him. We are one with him. If you still focus on the soul, it sounds kind of weird. <laughs> Because the soul didn't underst doesn't understand one. Okay, so, but if you come from the spirit, that's absolutely true. Okay, so if you feel kind of like, man, am I? You know, it's okay. It's, it's still the changing of your soul. Okay, you're not going to change the truth. <laughs> you're not going to change the truth. He absolutely knows he's one with you. With the whole thing. He purchased the whole thing. You are his. <laughs> he has no doubts. But as you go through this change, right, there are things that's like, man, that, but that, that was so much me, Lord. That was absolutely, no, oh, oh pff, that's me. That's Val. <laughs> okay, so he keeps changing us. And the changing is by laying down the psyche love, the soul life. No? By not doing things in your own power, not doing things as you are taught or religion teaches you, by not doing that, you lay down your psyche life and then his life comes in. Okay? Good. So, um, Spirit of rest. So what I, I talked so far is kind of to explain the mechanism of why you are told rest. Okay, Because you cannot understand the spiritual value, the spiritual existence, except from rest. Okay, So you've been given a, a great gift. <laughs> if you've been listening to Beloved, then you know, absolutely enter rest. Okay? Now you understand a little bit more why you had to maybe obey that. You know, so I obeyed that and this thing went away. Uh, because there is eternal existence that comes in and it changes the circumstances. Amen? Good. So, spirit of rest, the word, um, um, the word rest in that uh, place is nuwak. Nuwak. So uh, basically has something um, about settling down. And it has a very interesting importance there um, because the spirit of rest was upon Jesus when he had to begin and complete. So he brought a completion of an old man, the first Adam, and he started a new man creation in rest. That was the main purpose of the spirit of rest over Jesus. He knew he's going to be in between generations. He finishes something and starts something new. So, um, um, Genesis 5.29, interesting, it talks about he, um, Noah. You guess what's the name of Noah in Greek? It's Noach. His rest. <laughs> that was, that's, that had a purpose, right? Because Noach was going to bring the end of a world and start a new one. So whenever rest is revealed, there is an end and there is a beginning. You sons are in a very special place. <laughs> yes. 
there is an end and there is a beginning. That's why the Father gave you the revelation of rest. There is an end and there is a beginning. Amen? The spirit of rest is revealed to a generation that brings things to completion, to ceasing. Stop that. We are not that. You know, yes, you, you step on people's toes, but this is it. You know, I'll, I'm going to build that ark. I mean, how many people probably laugh at him and cuss him and hundred years I mean it's, it's not I mean we we go through a couple of months of persecution or people saying or a couple of years and it's like oh my gosh Lord what am I building here a hundred years every day neighbors coming by and making fun of you cursing 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 cussing all that stuff you know it's like hey what are you doing why do you go to the church I mean Three people, five, no, go to that church. What, what's happening to you? I'm building an ark, man. <laughs> well, we knew you were crazy before, but now you really went <laughs> over the border. <laughs> oh, man, how many people thought that about me? I, I cannot count. If I had so many dollars. <sighs> So spirit of rest is revealed to a generation that brings things to completion, to ceasing. And the end time generation knows the spirit of rest. Just say it with me, I'm the end time generation. <laughs> because I know the spirit of rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So um, Noah, which is Noah, right? was the first manifestation in the body of the spirit of rest to bring an end to the world as known and a new beginning. We are living, according to Jesus, days like the days of Noah. And people say, yeah, earthquakes and wars and... Uh, 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 uh. We see, we hear this, we live knowing the spirit of rest. We live the Noah. We live the Noah. That's what we are. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you're not going to feel in, in minority. I mean, maybe. I mean, Noah was, like, what, eight people? And I don't know how much is family believed in him and it, it it's a lonely place sometimes you know but as the father picks and opens up more and more and more and more there are more nuak that hear that and understand that you are the generation of nuak you are the generation that knows the spirit of rest hallelujah <laughs> Our generation of sons is manifesting the spirit of rest. So, there is a completion that's happening. You know, there is an end to lots of other things, you know, lots of other generations. You know, generations of the word of God, believers, people that love Jesus, hallelujah. But it's, it's so different, quality different, okay? So what you're getting is a different quality because it's a different level of understanding, okay? But it's, it's okay because... I think we are bringing an end of, you know, the, the teachings as they were. You know, the prayer, the reading, the pastoral church, the apostolic church. We bring an end to that. 
Okay? Even if we know all these things, but this is new. It's new. So what you experienced last night, when, that I call the body um, blessing the body, you know, the body of Christ that's actually blessing the body, it's something new. Okay? It's not a prayer because the, the problem with the prayer in the old was that as the man of God or the leadership, yeah, even you know, lots of very special churches, you know, in America, others, you know, they have the leadership, the people with gifts, and everybody lines up to those people to get blessed. Okay? We bring an end to that. Because you are all anointed. <laughs> <laughs> you all have life to give. Do you see how new this is? It's so different. It's the life of Christ that flows through you. So I know this type of things in you know, a worship and prayer, and there will be so many other things that are specific to our generation. They do not come from trying to get somewhere, trying to be somewhere, but come from understanding you are. Therefore, you give. You are. So, so I'm, I'm supposed to see something when I pray for you? Yeah. Because you're part of me. <laughs> you're part of me. I'm part of you. I mean, how many woke up this morning and started to teach your left hand how to talk or how to deal with the right hand? It's like, okay, now you sit here and you learn this. I mean, how many? But you, got, you went and grabbed the coffee with the right hand and the left hand grabbed the chapati. How did they know? How did they know? Because it's a living body. No, if you have to teach that, that means there is a brain problem. Probably it was a stroke. And you have to relearn the movements, you know? So that's kind of how I see lots of the training and how to hold this, how to say this, right? No, it, it comes from inside. This is the living body of Christ. But see, you went through rest because it's not about you and what you can do, it's about him. So suddenly he comes through and he's like, wow, I see the pain in this person. And I didn't know. It's like my pain. No, if you heard me, I, I, I told you this because I, I learned um, that the word that the Lord says that uh, the two shall be one flesh, you know, with, with my wife, that prayers absolutely work. Every time. Sometimes I'm just saying things or I'm just hugging her and pain disappears. Because he told me that's not her body, it's yours. Sons have that revelation. <laughs> yeah, you marry another person, but that becomes your body. So you don't pray for her body. <laughs> you pray for your body. And I'm telling you, it always works. And I know this is coming to the body of Christ as we pray for one another, as we pray for us. <laughs> yeah. So we pray for somebody's pain as it is your pain. So this is a different type of prayer. It's my pain. <laughs> I have to remove that pain. It's not your pain. I'm not giving you a gift for you, it's me. That's me sitting there. That's oneness. That's sonship. So that's where the, the psyche, soul life has to be laid down. Because in the Zoe, in the spirit, absolutely there is oneness. Absolutely. The spirit has absolutely no problem understanding this, but the soul life was trained differently. And that's a person, that's a person, that's, you know. But in the spirit, it's, that's me. 
<laughs> That's me, you know, in, in another housing. <laughs> in another clothes. But that's me. That's Jesus. In a, you know, different color, skin, hair, age. But it's me. That's how you pray for one another. That's how you bless one another. It's you. So see, prayer changes completely from Noah. For the generation that knows Noah, absolutely changes completely. Because he says no one hated his own body. So it's work to pray for you, but it's normal to pray for me. So I pray for me, for my own body. <laughs> Complete different type of understanding of prayer. That's rest. <laughs> I claim, I say that, I receive that existence for me. <laughs> it's you. But it's me. <laughs> now I, I start to change uh, that. So I say we am and I are. <laughs> the language is coming. <laughs> Science is coming. <laughs> I are there. <laughs> so we am. <laughs> so it's... The language is changing. We, we're trying to catch up, you know, because it's we're so taught separation in everything. So everything, everything is changing. Oneness is coming. So you've been set up. You probably didn't know, but you've been set up because you are coming through rest. You have a relationship with rest already. So you've been set up because now you come into the new. And the new, it's no separation. The new is one. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Good. Okay, I think we're done. Let's stand up. <laughs> I'll, I'll give that to you after that, but I just want to pray. Uh, just say with me, Father, Father, I'm a son in the kingdom. Right now, I speak to the spirit of rest. Spirit of rest, I love you. I welcome you in my soul. So you can impart the Nuach in my soul. Because all things are becoming new. You complete what has to be done with and start everything new. I love you, rest. And I will treasure relationship with you every day. <laughs> Amen. Let's, let's come with a spiritual tithing now. So say, Father, I'm a son in the kingdom. Lord Jesus, you are my high priest. I bring a tithe of the increase of relationship with all the living kingdom. And I worship the Father of this. Just worship him. That's amazing. You are amazing. Your kingdom is amazing. I'm in awe of you, Father. I'm in awe of you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Lord, everything was sown. It's going to grow. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.